Today on Serve and Learn, we're focusing on the small urban city of Monte Cristi. There's a lot to see and a lot of history, including an orphanage and English institute supported by Orphanage Outreach. This and more coming up next on Serve and Learn. Hey, and welcome to another exciting episode of Serve and Learn. Today, we're focusing on the city of Monte Cristi. This is the town where both the orphanage and English Institute that Orphanage Outreach supports are located. Right now, I'm standing among many things for which this city is known for. Next to me are the salt flats. Further to the east, you can see a mountain called El Moro, and if you look in the background, you can catch a glimpse of the ocean. But if I start walking in your direction, I'll end up right in the center of town. But before you follow me on foot, let's look at some of the highlights of this great town. As you saw from where I was standing, Monte Cristi is a coast town, meaning that it's located right on the ocean. This special location provides lots of jobs in the area of fishing for many residents of the town. Along part of the town's coastline, you will find a wide array of fishing boats, some anchored and some out at sea. In addition to fishing by boat, there are also a number of spear fishermen in the area who will spend hours out fishing near the coast to catch fish for both themselves and to sell to restaurants and other locals. Fishing is one way in which many locals make a living in Monte Cristi. Although most of the boats you will see anchored along the Monte Cristi coastline belong to local fishermen, there are also several that are used for traveling to one of the nearby uninhabited islands. There are a total of seven small islands off the coast of Monte Cristi, with the closest one being about three miles from the shore. Tourists and even Dominican visitors pay for boat rides to these islands where they can enjoy a quiet day of swimming or relaxing in the sand. And if beaches are what you're looking for, Monte Cristi has those too. Although Monte Cristi is not well known for being a tourist area, there are several small beaches along the coast of town that locals enjoy, as well as one somewhat larger and more famous beach that both locals and occasional visitors flock to. That beach would be El Moro National Park, on the northeast edge of town. Surrounded by two main mountains, El Moro Beach is a long stretch of sandy and sometimes rocky shore where the ocean waves are typically pretty big. Both the beach area and trails to climb the smaller of the two mountains are available to the public. A major industry in Monte Cristi is salt. There is a long stretch of salt flats near the ocean coast where you saw me standing earlier. The production of salt in Monte Cristi provides many jobs for the residents of the town and is something the city is well known for. We'll hear more about the production of the salt later in this episode from our field reporter Megan. As you get further away from the shoreline and further into the downtown area of Monte Cristi, you will see that the downtown has many features as well. There are two main parks in town, the Manola Taveras Park, which includes a water fountain, playground area, pavilion, and a statue dedicated to the Dominican revolutionary Manuel Aurelio Taveras, also known as Manolo, and the clock tower park, known for the tall clock tower that stands in the center. The tower was built by Eiffel in 1895, who also built the famous Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. This park sits across the street from the large Catholic Church of Monte Cristi and offers lots of space to rest on benches and lots of shade from the many trees. The clock tower has a climbable stairway and the bell can be heard ringing through the town every 15 minutes. Yet another important place in town is the Cuban Museum. Although small, this museum and its location are significant to the Dominican Republic's history because it's where Jose Marti and Maximo Gomez signed the Manifesto of Monte Cristi, which declared independence for Cuba. There are several other unique places to see when wandering through the downtown area, such as the Chic Hotel, which in addition to being a hotel, includes a restaurant, ice cream shop, money exchange office, and internet and phone center for the public. Across the street from the Chic Hotel, you will find a lineup of mopeds or motorcycles at almost any time of the day. Most towns, Monte Cristi included, have a spot for what are called moto taxis. Since many people don't own cars, or possibly even their own moped, 
Moto taxis are an option when traveling somewhere on the far side of town. Spread out in all directions from the Chic Hotel, you will find many stores and businesses common in towns throughout the Dominican Republic, and even common in towns where you're from. In Monte Cristi, you will find pharmacies, cell phone and electric stores, churches, bus stations, restaurants, gas stations, small grocery stores, schools, other stores, various types of homes, and much more. So now that you've seen some of what Monte Cristi has to offer and is known for, let's find out where it's located on the map. Here's Amy when she was showing us some of the key airports and cities in the country. If you follow the arrow to the top left corner of the map, you will see Monte Cristi right near the Haiti border as well as bordering the Atlantic Ocean. From a closer view, you can see where Monte Cristi is in relation to the nearest major airport in the big city of Santiago. Traveling by vehicle, Monte Cristi is about two hours away from Santiago. So now that you know where Monte Cristi is, as well as several key places around town, when talking about the key places, we mentioned the National Park El Moro. To take a closer look, let's join Megan, our field reporter, who is there right now. Moro National Park. As it was mentioned earlier, Monte Cristi is not known for being a huge touristy area. However, as you can see, they certainly have some of the most beautiful beaches here. This particular beach doesn't see a whole lot of people, except around the major holidays. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Megan. We sure are learning a lot about this town. But even after all that we've told you about Monte Cristi so far, there are still a few important fast facts that you should know. Let's take a look. The population of urban Monte Cristi is about 17,000. The Monte Cristi area is famous for goat not only as a farm animal but as a popular menu item at local restaurants. The climate in Monte Cristi is dry and desert-like for most of the year. There are many old Victorian style houses that are still standing in the town of Monte Cristi. Several current Major League Baseball players, including Tony Pena, former Major League catcher, Fabio Castro of the Chicago White Sox, are several baseball players born in Monte Cristi. Although at this point it is only used by small planes, the tiny Monte Cristi airport is the closest airport to the United States from anywhere in the Dominican Republic. It's time for another Serve and Learn Spanish Word of the Week. Today's word, go. You know the drill. The word for go in Spanish is chivo. Let's practice chivo, chivo. This has been another Serve and Learn Spanish Word of the Week. Mmm. I'm sure glad we're able to learn about the word chivo today because it happens to be one of my favorite Dominican dishes. Now, although we've already heard from Megan at El Moro National Beach, we happen to have her on location for an extra feature for this week's episode. Let's find out what other special place Megan wants to show us. Hi again. After checking out El Moro, we decided to stop by and show you the Monte Cristi Salt Flats. Over 300 families from around this area currently work and operate these salt flats. How it works is ocean water is pumped into these spaces where it then sits for nearly 14 days given there is no rain as the water will evaporate. After the water evaporates, there is a thin sheet of salt remaining that looks similar to ice. Then the salt is raked and put into large piles where it has the chance to finish drying after which it is ready to be bagged and taken to the factory for processing. Most of the salt from here is then sent to the United States and sold under the name of Morton Salt. Thanks again, Megan. That sure is a lot of salt coming from the little town of Monte Cristi. It seems by now that we've seen everything that this town has to offer. 
But before we go, let's follow Amy and some of her friends as she takes us on a 60-second speedy tour of town. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Serve and Learn. We're on the outskirts of Monte Cristi, and now we're going to take you on a 60-second tour of some of the other important places. Let's go. In Spanish, it's called Correos. You can mail letters just like you can in the United States or Canada, but you have to pay in pesos. Let's go to the next place. We're now at the grocery store in town called Zillow's. They have lots of different products, and it's probably the biggest store to buy food in town. Let's go see. Thank you. 